This is interior designer Stephen C. Adamco, and I am going to be talking about the relationship of walls to furnishings. Very important idea here. They are the backdrop or the background to furniture, things, and people. Probably the first idea of importance when a person starts out to construct a color scheme for any room is that of making a plan which will consider the room completely furnished as a whole. It's impossible to intelligently select colors for walls, wood trim, floors, and ceilings without knowing the kind, character, and color of the furniture, draperies, window treatments, and accessories in general, which are to be used as a part of the completed room. And yet, this is done every day. More rooms are designed and decorated without a reference to the furnishings than after a plan which includes everything. Hopefully, as people in mass become better educated in the artistic use of color, texture, and design, this rather arbitrary selection of decoration for walls and surfaces of rooms will diminish. I think we need a renaissance of color, a revival of interest in color, instead of builder beige which is given even greater impetus to painting and decorating industries. Intense interest needs to be aroused in the great majority of people in better and more extensive use of colors. Designers, decorators, painters, textile workers, and all who use colors are confronted with the necessity for learning more about the tasteful and harmonious use of colors. A greater knowledge of color pigments, liquids, theory of color, and principles of color law is imperative for those who would not only keep abreast of things going on, but make a greater influence in our living environments. Having a plan for a color scheme makes you consider the room as a whole and points to the wisdom of orchestrating and correlating colors, textures, and designs. It makes you construct the harmony of a room as an author constructs his story and as an artist plans his composition on canvas or in music. The lack of a plan and organized thought in selecting color schemes is largely responsible for most failures to acquire the unity and harmony in the home environment. Take, for instance, somebody who lectures, who talks and talks aimlessly, who just rambles on and on, and soon exhausts the patience and interest of his audience. A story in fiction or a drama without a plot, direction, progression, and climax is just a flat failure. There is little or no difference between these and attempted decoration of a room to gain harmony of color in architecture and furnishings. People accept these flat failures because they have grown accustomed to them and they live with them for years, all the while being influenced unfavorably both mentally and physically by them unknowingly. This really has to stop. So let's talk about orchestrating and correlating walls, floors, trim, and ceiling. When a thoughtful plan has been made, all furnishings and colors, textures, and designs going into a room are selected with reference to the whole room as a unit, as one composition. Of course, the question does arise with most people when they buy furniture, draperies, and other furnishings as to how will it go with this or that? But even then, there is usually no plan for the whole room. So anxiety is present because of the possibility of one piece of furnishing may conceivably clash with another. How all this should correlate and fit together doesn't seem to concern most people as often as it should. There ought to be less promiscuous buying of wallpapers, draperies, furniture, toss pillows, accessories, pictures, rugs, pottery, and vases. When this process is approached and accomplished the right way, much more success is gained in constructing beautiful, restful, and harmonious interiors. When things are done right, the discords and the ugliness will be eliminated and disorder will change to artistic arrangement. The beauty of art is not a thing apart from all else. It is part of the everyday life of people and is expressed constantly in the construction of private and public buildings. Real beauty and art comes from the satisfaction one feels when the eye 
the intellect, and the affections or emotions are satisfied. Ornamentation, which is part of decoration, should add to the beauty of a structure as a whole. It is not necessary to the utility or functionality of a structure or article of merchandise, and it is bad decoration if it interferes with the utility or functionality of the piece. So we're talking about the orchestration of interiors and the elements that go into it. The result of good decoration should be a color effect as a whole, not colors. You orchestrate colors. You don't pick out colors. It's the difference between a professional and an amateurish approach and methodology. In color management, selecting colors which go well together is largely a matter of mathematically following rules in a sense. Choosing colors that go well together is simply a matter of knowing colors and color principles. Knowledge is important. You can't do this out of ignorance or just a gut feeling about things, even though there is an emotional aspect to all this. Feeling and intuition will only take you so far. Like a surgeon, you have to know what you're doing. The big thing in creating color schemes, which are not only in harmony, but which possess the quality of interest and have the power to sustain that interest indefinitely is organization and orchestration, just like music. The difficult task is that of making a plan for color treatment of a room Gaining harmony by contrast to values, hues, and intensities. Harmony in balance, proportion, and rhythm. That calls for judicious selection of bright and dull, warm and cool, advancing and receding colors, gloss and flat, large and small areas, location, repetition, and arrangement of colors, as well as appropriate wall textures. So there really is a lot involved in this, if you want to do it in an expert way. The perfect color scheme sustains interest. It's livable and grows on you. It possesses neither great variety nor great likeness. In other words, it doesn't go too far on either side. Too much variety causes restlessness. Discord and chaos are extreme degrees of variety in contrast of values hues, or intensities. Too much variety in music or anything else is chaotic. Too much of sameness, likeness, and uniformity, on the other hand, dispels interest and is the extreme in monotony. A lot of people talk about focal points. Well, let's just rephrase that just a little bit and let's call them climaxes and centers of interest. Just as a drama, and a story require a climax to make an entertaining, harmonious unit which sustains interest, so also it is a must that perfect and practical color schemes have climaxes as well. Centers of interest which constitute climaxes are essential as elements around which the color schemes and all decoration can be constructed. A climax, high note, or punctuation in a room may be a brilliant, intense colored vase or a bouquet of flowers arranged in a vase and grouped on a table so the light will reflect them in a mirror. The climax may be a fine book in art binding of pure, intense color arranged on a very light colored or white table cover. It may be a rather large picture, the colors of which are pure and intense and contrasting with great vigor. Window treatments of bright color, which are grayed somewhat, are too often the climax of a room. As a rule, the climax color of a room is very bright, but should be used in comparatively small areas. If pure, intense colors are used in more than one center of interest, unless the room is large, anti-climaxes will be present and the effectiveness of the decorative plan will be injured then the room will not be so restful and inviting. Stimulation for the eye will come from too many sources in competition with each other for attention. Those who live in the room become weary and uneasy without really knowing what the cause is. To be sure of balance in a color scheme, the rule to follow is that of having a small area of pure, intensely brilliant color 
balance a large area of dull, grayed, and subdued color. The principle of constructing a color scheme around a climax doesn't mean that all the colors except those in the climax group must be very dull grays or very low contrast of value in other colors. Moderate contrast of value in self tints and shades of the keynote color are fine and permissible. Moderate contrast of values and of grade hues of related colors may be also used to good effect. And even complementary colors, considerably grayed or neutralized by the addition of white or complementary colors, can be used to add a cheerful note and to avoid a too somber and depressing atmosphere in the color scheme before the climax color is introduced. These related colors and subdued complementary colors may well occur in the rugs, carpet, draperies, pictures, pottery, and other miscellaneous furnishings. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about appropriateness of colors and textures. The eternal fitness of things has a forceful illustration in the selection of color schemes for various rooms. Take, for instance, a lady's bedroom. We might employ light, delicate, and airy tints. Grays, gray greens, pale pink and silver, delicate yellows and pale blues. But in the trophy room of a men's club, such a delicate harmony would be absolutely ridiculous. In a men's club, you need a more forceful, strong coloring, all in harmony. And there is the use of quietly insistent complementary colors and stronger contrast of values and hues and intensities are called for in this situation, as well as more rugged wall textures. Or a woman's hat shop calls for a different handling of delicate colors in harmony. A novel and more colorful treatment and arrangement of colors to display greater strength of contrast than in a lady's bedroom are needed in this situation. The brilliant display of gold, vermilion, ivory, and intense blues of a circus will usually find no appropriate place in the decoration of home interiors unless it's for children. Although the decoration of a business display room for powerful machinery ought by all means to make use of fairly intense complementary colors with strength of contrast and of values. Colors and wall finished textures must fit the purpose for which a room is to be used just as much as it is true in the case of selling merchandise. A strong and powerful piece of farm machinery is appropriately colored in intense reds and greens. It would look ridiculous painted in the baby blue or pink of a child's bed or high chair or any other thing of that nature. At this point, I'm going to stop and call this part one. We'll continue on in part two where we'll start with balancing a color scheme.